Welcome to Milestone Mic Methods, a tutorial series brought to you by Music in Africa Live, where we show you how to capture the sounds of African instruments. At Milestone Studios in Cape Town, our engineers have spent decades finding the best way to mic up instruments that are unique to our continent, and we're going to share that knowledge in every episode. I'm Tavo Mopo, and today we'll be looking at the best way to place a microphone on a marimba for live performances and recording. The marimba has been part of Southern African music for hundreds of years. It's made of a set of tuned wooden bars, which are hit with mallets. African marimbas aren't usually chromatic, which means they can't play in every key. Sometimes you find a set of marimbas that are in tune with each other, but not in concert pitch, which can make it difficult to add them to an existing track. The most common types of marimba are soprano, tenor, and bass. Even a soprano marimba is over a meter wide. So if possible, use two microphones to capture the sound. If you only have one microphone, the best place to put it is over the middle of the instrument. But you might find that this doesn't pick up the sound fully. In a live show, a dynamic microphone like the Sennheiser MD421 is a good option. Place the microphone pointing down towards the bars. If you put it too close to the bars, then you might not pick up the notes at the two ends of the instrument. Positioning it higher will capture more of the sound, but it will also pick up more of the sound of other nearby instruments. So you'll have to decide which is more important. Make sure that you position the microphone where the player won't accidentally hit it with the mallets. In a studio situation, you can get a better sound by using two microphones. We usually use condenser microphones, which have a wider frequency response than the MD421. Here, we're using the built-in mics on the Zoom H4n, which is an affordable stereo recorder. This will give a full natural sound, with one microphone pointing towards the bass part of the instrument, and the other picking up the treble end. Another option is to put two mics in the middle at 90 degrees to each other and facing outwards. In this case, we're using two Neumann U87s. If the marimba is very big, you can even put a third mic in the middle, because if the other two are spaced too far apart, then the sound in the middle won't be picked up properly. It's beyond the scope of this video to go into detail, but using multiple microphones can cause phase problems if they aren't positioned correctly. If you're recording more than one marimba, it's often useful to put screens between them to prevent too much sound leaking from one set of mics to another. Here, we're using some of the techniques we discussed to record a group. The bass marimba has three microphones on it, so we can be sure to capture its full sound. 
Many marimbas have rattles attached to the body, usually made of bottle tops. This adds a percussive element and is an important part of the sound. Don't feel that you have to try and get rid of the buzzing when you're recording. If it's too loud, you can use masking tape to mute some of the rattles. Well, that's it for today. Our thanks to Ngeba and Tolani Kontlaika and Kim Masala for demonstrating how these instruments are played. And to our sponsors, Music in Africa Live, the Goethe Institute, Siemens, and the Federal Foreign Office for supporting African music. Watch out for more videos in the series. And until next time, cheers and goodbye.